Um, from what I understand, the French government or, or whoever's in charge of this said that they're not going to build an airport there any longer, but they still wanted to evict the population that had settled there. So what is yes. what is going on with that exactly? So basically what happened was, you know, Macron was elected last year and, you know, mm-hmm. throughout you know, his predecessor, Francois Hollande, throughout the Hollande government, they were still wavering back and forth on it. You know, it was like, we're still going to build it, but we're still going to build it. But, and one of the things that Macron promised when he got into office was we are going to make a decision on this in the next year. It's going to be a definitive decision. And we are also going to evacuate it within the year. That's going to be definitive. So I think it was like early February that The government finally came out, you know, and they announced that, you know, we're going to make an announcement on the, you know, Mm -hmm. and frankly, I thought that they were about to say, you know, we're building it, it's definite, we're breaking ground, and we're going to move you all out. Mm -hmm. Um, And most people I talked to, that's also what we expected. But it was actually the opposite. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) The, The prime minister came out the next day and said, okay, like, it's done. Like, it's done. It's done for good. We are burying the idea. Instead, we want to expand the airports that already exist in Nantes and in Rennes. And this is dead in the water. That's it. And, I mean, I remember, like, you know, this town erupted in a party. I mean, this this town, I mean, although, you know, it was a a party, you know, surrounded by riot cops. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You know, it was, you know, and it was fascinating reading, like, the various... Uh, media opinions on this, especially the right-wing media in France, mm-hmm. because you know, the right-leaning publications, specifically like Le Figaro, for example, were basically like, how could you do this? Do you realize you just gave them a huge victory? You just motivated them, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> this yeah. is a future battle, and you just handed it to them. And now every single time you're going to try to build everything, they're going to do this again. You know, you just showed them yeah. <laughs> that this works. Um, but then, of course, the left-leading publications like Liberation, you know, like, look, look, we won. It works. It works. It works. You know, victory of the people. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, then, of course, with the announcement that they weren't going to build it anymore, you know, from the governmental perspective, this was now a justification. It was kind of like, OK, you won. So you no longer have any reason to be on that land. Mm-hmm. And we're going to give you a couple months and we're going to come in and we're going to move you off. And that triggered a split, both within the ZAD itself and within everyone who's been supporting the ZAD from here on in. You know, there were like there were two types of people who moved onto that land. There were people who just wanted to protect it from an airport being built. But they were also, you know, the utopian anarchist types who were kind of like, you know, no, this isn't just about that. You know, we're creating a new way of life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so immediately and of course the government immediately tries to exploit that you know they know full well you know that's the way to break up any movement right (laughs) exploit the split so you know within the zad itself there started to be you know daily debates around people who just wanted to pack up and leave people who wanted to negotiate with the government to stay and then you know your hardcore folks said absolutely not we do not negotiate with the state we are going to stay here no matter what Mm -hmm. But, you know, what also happened both, you know, like, you know, those in authority, we'll just call them as a general group, the governmental entities that opposed the project started to come out and say, okay, you know, Macron is right, the government is right, you know, like, (laughs) you won, you have to go home now. Mm -hmm. Um, And so unlike in 2012, when, you know, the evacuation was opposed, not just because of its violence, but because those people were there protecting something important. It's a very different vibe this time around mm-hmm. because so, many, you know, for example, uh, Nicola Hulo, who is uh, the uh, minister of economy, uh, the, 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 sorry, <laughs> he's the, um, I'm trying to think of the word and I forget the word, e- ecology, minister of ecology okay. under um, um he before he was appointed that, you know, he was like a Green Party guy, you know, for years and years and years, he pushed against this airport. He completely supported the people living on the land. But he came out the other day and was basically like, nope, it has to go. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah. you can't you don't just get to live there illegally. You know, and the government is basically stressing the fact that, you know, they're squatters and they're not paying any taxes in order to kind of foment resentment 
amongst, you know, because the farmer who lives on the farm next door, even though he didn't want the airport, you know, they're trying, well, well, wait, now these guys just get to live here for free. I I have to pay. I had to pay for my land. Why should they live there for free? Mm -hmm. So both the government and the media have very, very successfully been able to exploit that. Yeah. Um, and so, of course, you know, as they promised, you know, they moved in, I want to say like the 9th of April, you know, everyone wakes up at four in the morning and there's 2,500 riot cops <laughs> throwing <laughs> flash bombs and tear gas and trying to get everyone out. Um, but of course, you know, there's a huge response to this. So, you know, there's 300 people living on that land who basically made a public call. Hey, you know, we need help. So people came in from, you know, all over the country, probably even from elsewhere to help, you know, just living on the land temporarily, you know, kind of assert themselves so that it's not at least as easily destroyed. Mm -hmm. And that brings us basically to where we have been for the past three weeks, where, you know, the police are trying, I mean, what they're they're basically doing is, you know, they're trying to like take one portion at a time. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, to me, it feels like a war. Like it reminds me of like World War One. Like there's literally like there's a front, yeah. <laughs> so a, a zone that the zaddies are still holding, and there's a zone that the police are holding, and the police try to push in and expand their zone, and and wow. <laughs> the zaddies push back, and then all of a sudden there's just like a, a raining down tear gas, and so the zaddies run. The police come in, destroy whatever is there, whatever they can find. But the police can't stay twenty four seven, so they go home at the night. (laughs) And in the middle of the night, everyone comes and they rebuild and they reassert their position and they push forward and wait for the cops the next day. And so you know, and and that's where you know it's fascinating to me. You know what I said before about kind of seeing the sheer size of it. You know, like I was part of Occupy Eugene. You know, and when the cops decided that we were going, there was really nothing we could do about it. There was enough of them to surround the entire park. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Had the power to arrest all of us. You know. Yeah. We symbolically tried to stay, but we knew full well that like they would remove everyone from this land destroy everything on the land, and then be able to fence in the land and put a trespassing sign. But this is seven square miles. It's impossible mm-hmm. to do. Yeah, much bigger <laughs> occupation, know? yeah. Exactly. And so, you know, the, the position that people there are basically taking is like, go ahead, destroy it. We're just going to rebuild it. And you'll keep destroying it, and we'll keep rebuilding it. And this is going to, you know, and, and it's like this is happening, am- you know, Amongst a government, you know, the Macron administration is the government of austerity, right? Mm -hmm. Everything costs way too much money. We have to cut this. We, I mean, this entire country is basically on strike right now (laughs) because (laughs) Macron is trying to cut everything from workers' pensions to retirement to, you know, vacate. Like, I mean, he's just, he's a neoliberal. So he's being a neoliberal Mm -hmm. in a country that's always resisted neoliberalism. So it doesn't really look good for him to have this massively expensive police operation going on that really after th- I mean it's I think it's costing something like 15,000 euros a day. I was number I I can't verify that number. I heard it quoted somewhere, but it's expensive. Yeah. I mean they've got big machines. They've got, you know, they they're very impressed, you know, and like we joke in America, right? There's 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 two sides. Only one is dressed for a riot. <laughs> yeah. Only <laughs> <laughs> dressed a riot you know and but it's like and they're succeeding in that they definitely destroy a little more every single day Mm -hmm. um the day that i had went there just the day before they had bulldozed you know like six or seven structures and so we spent the day building rebuilding one of the structures i mean like we're literally hauling wood like (laughs) half a mile through this you know like hundreds and hundreds of people hauling two by fours and then, you know, I mean, it, it, it almost felt like, you know, Burning Man, but surrounded by riot cops. You know, there's a huge circle of people in the field building this structure and somebody's drumming and some, you know, someone else is singing. And, you know, it's like they're <laughs> determined to keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, of course, that night, as soon as everybody left, the police came in at five in the morning and completely demolished it. Mm. Um, so, you know, that's where it stands right now. 